Hello, good evening. It is such a great pleasure to have you join us this evening. I am Anita Mwanguzi and uh, welcome to WBS Prime News Live. But first, to look at what's coming up. Singer AK-47 found dead in a bathroom. Twenty ten bomb suspects deny being guilty. Airport police intercepts four drums of ivory being smuggled out of the country. And FMU contract German expect to train Ugandan team ahead of Eastern Central African Championships. It's good to have you with us. We start off on a sad note following the death of one of Uganda's upcoming artists, Emmanuel Mayanda Molindua alias AK-47. The 25-year-old artist was found lying flat with a cut on his head and crashes on his back as at Devanju Bar and Lounge Bathroom, located in Kansanga, a small suburb in Kampala, Makindia Division, on Monday night. Zamzam Siraj trailed this story in our reports. This is Emmanuel Mayanja Molindwa, commonly known as AK-47, whose end of life in a bathtub in Devanju Bar and Restaurant, situated in Kansanga, a Kampala suburb, took many by surprise. Unfortunately, he died at a tender age of 25 years, in spite of the cut that was found on his head and bloody scratches on his back, many unanswered to the events that built up to his death. Police could not take his mysterious death as a lighter matter. A team of investigators by press time were already on ground to ascertain the cause into the death of the singer. By 9 a.m., the scene of crime had been sealed off, and this is the Vanju Bar and Restaurant in Kabalagala. <laughs> The bar was immediately closed and on spot arrests of the bar manager was done. The arrest is aimed to help police in the investigations, although the proprietor of the bar, Claret Kabenge, denied claims that the artist was not clobbered as thought by many. <laughs> The light was not poisoned. He didn't fight with anyone. He didn't. It was an accident. Everything was calm. It was a normal night. My brother was around. The manager was around. It was a normal night. In an interview, the eyewitness made a tell count of the incident. From the scene of crime, we moved to the home of AK-47's parents in Seguku, where hundreds of mourners converged to convey condolences to the bereaved family. 
His father, Ronald Mayanja, says this is one of his best and well-behaved son amongst the other children. Uh, he has not given us any problem as far as his health is concerned. So I don't know how this one came about. Yeah, and we are yet to find out because we have not received the post-mortem report. It's what we are waiting for. And we have not had a, we have not had a chance of meeting that particular person who was with him that very moment. Until the time of his death, AK-47 has left one widow and three kids. His body laying at National Theatre for public viewing overnight, and later it will be taken to his parents' home for burial in Mitiana on Thursday. Samsam Siraj, WBS News, Seguku. May his soul rest in eternal peace. In other news, five years after being charged with terrorism, the state has amended the charge sheet of the 13 July 2010 bomb terror suspects. The suspects include Edris Magondu, Suleiman Hija, Hussein Hassan Agade, Mohammed Adan, Omar Awadi Omar, Mohammed Hamid Suleiman, Yahaya Suleiman Butla, Suleiman Joroge, Isa Ahmed Luima, Hassan Haruna Luima, Muzarafu Luima, Abu Baker Batematio, and Dr. Ismail Kalule. The accuser was this morning beefed up at the Kampala High Court Criminal Division awaiting hearing of the Kampala July twin bombing suspects. When they appeared in court, Dr. Kalule Ayubu, who was at first released on the same charges, was reintroduced and charged again. The state also informed court how it had amended the charge sheet. The allegation against you is that you, Dr. Ismail Kalule, and the same persons who are in the dock and others who are not in the dock, on the 11th day of July 2010, have charged on the rugby club in the Kawa division in the Kampala district, Mali Sapoto, Mada Nabachu, and Brenda. At first, they were indicted with charges of terrorism, murder, attempted murder, and being an accessory to terrorism over the July 11, 2010 city twin bombing that left at least 76 people dead and scores injured at Kyadondo Rugby Club in Lugogo, an Ethiopian village restaurant in Kawalakala, both in Kampala. But when the case came up yesterday for the trial to begin prosecution, led principal state attorney Lino Anguzu told a trial judge Alfonsi Owini Dolo they had to amend the charge sheet. Anguzi explained that the charge sheet had to be amended since they had decided to try Dr. Ismail Kale, whom the prosecution had let go of in 2011 when the case had just commenced. With that, Justice Owenye Dolo indicted Kaule with charges of terrorism, 92 counts of murder, nine counts of attempted murder, and being an accessory with the two they said terrorism. Kaule denied the charges, saying that he doesn't know anything. The judge then proceeded to indict 12 of the accused with the charge to being members of a terrorist group Al Shabaab, which is affiliated to Al Qaeda, another terrorist group. But when it came to taking plea, two brothers, Isa Ahmed Luima and Hassan Haruna Luima, refused to take plea, saying that they needed an adjournment to consult on how they will take plea of that particular charge. But this part up Judge Owenyo Dolo and asked their lawyer Caleb Alaka whether his clients wanted to check their records, if at all they have ever been members of Al Shabaab. But Alaka insisted that they needed an adjournment because they had tough decisions to make. This left court on tenterhooks, thinking that the two may plead guilty. But after the lunch break, the two brothers took plea and denied the accusation, claiming that 
is false. He murdered Sanga George. Earlier, the judge warned the media from calling the suspect terrorist, saying it's only him who has the mandate to declaring them guilty or innocent after hearing evidence. Justice Owinyi Dolo assured the suspects that despite a five-year delay in the trial, they are going to receive a speedy and fair trial. Last October, the Constitutional Court dismissed the suspect's petition in which they were challenging the manner in which they were brought to Uganda from their countries, Kenya and Tanzania respectively, to stand trial. They argued that they were brought without an extradition order by a competent court. Justice Dolo adjourned the case to Thursday this week. Health State Minister Dr. Chris Pariomonsi says his first mission at the ministry will be addressing the problem of the poor attitude of health workers along with their welfare problems. Speaking ahead of this, he is interfaced with the Appointments Committee of Parliament on Wednesday this week. The Kinkizi East lawmaker says he will miss the liberty enjoyed by the backbenchers in speaking out their minds but maintained that he has nothing to fear ahead of his vetting. Finally, a few hours turn between the ministers designate and their offices with the appointments committee set to convene on Wednesday morning to scrutinize their credentials. For health state minister designate in charge of general duties, Dr. Chris Pariomasi, it is a change of places from a passionate backbencher on health issues to one now expected to offer solutions. He says he has nothing to fear ahead of tomorrow's vetting. I join the ministry still committed to advancing the cause of the health sector. There are challenges within the sector which must be addressed. Uh, I think the immediate issue for us to address is to make the health facilities functional, especially the health center falls and the district hospitals. He says his priorities are clearly lined out when he resumes office. Also asking the health workers to change their attitudes towards work because many of them I think have a poor attitude, they report late. We don't care about the welfare of the patients, so that we have to address. He, however, joins a ministry marred by welfare problems, a limited budget, and a miserable infrastructure that has left Ugandans asking for more. Also, as government and the ministry, we must also address the issues of their welfare, because health workers in Uganda are still poorly paid, and we shall explore ways of enhancing their welfare. So, I will still push for issues which I have stood for as a back of venture so that we can improve the performance of the health sector. His elevation to cabinet, however, comes with complications back home in the Chigezi region, where the ruling party is struggling to put an end to the influence of Kinkizi West MP and former Prime Minister Amama Mbabazi, with many predicting a difficult battle for Bariomus' return to the 10th Parliament. For a man who made his name as an independent-minded member of the National Resistance Movement Party, we ask him what he will miss about the backbench. When I was a backbencher, I was free to raise issues and to put the ministers to task to explain, including the ministers of health. But now it will change. Probably it will be me who will put task and I will have to explain what the ministry is doing. But the, still, I am a member of the House. The nominees to cabinet positions face the appointments committee at 9.30 am tomorrow in what now stands between them and being ministers in government. Sabit Joseph, Davis Television. Crossing over to NTV now, our international airport police has intercepted four drums of ivory. The ivory was detected as the suspects attempted to smuggle it through the security scanner machine at the airport. Belore Logistics Limited is among the companies highlighted on the Uganda Wildlife Authority Intelligence Watch List of companies dealing in illegal ivory trade in Uganda, smuggling the trunks to Malaysia, India, China. This is the second time NTB Airport on smuggling police is intercepting ivory trunks in a space of three weeks. <laughs> The own smuggling police of the airport detected four drums as the suspect attempted to smuggle them through a security scanner. The own smuggling police here at the airport is convinced that Sally will provide a leading clue into the arrest of other suspects still at large. The total weight was declared to be 1,000 kilograms. 
But now what we are going to do is to remove uh, the ivory and weigh them separately so that we get the exact weight. According to Awita, since 2008, the out smuggling police at Entebbe Airport has made five interceptions. In December 2013, Uganda Wildlife Authority working with aviation police upon obtaining intelligence information on how serious the illegal ivory trade was in the country, they seized a consignment at Entebbe International Airport containing 440 pieces of raw ivory elephant tusks and 372 pieces of work ivory in form of bangles and chop sticks. However, this latest impounded ivory weighed about 1,000 kilograms, according to the public relations officer of the Uganda Wildlife Authority, Jose Muhangizi. The ivory may have been smuggled from the DRC Congo. Uh, they were going on board Etihad Air Cargo, and uh, they were destined for Singapore, according to the documents available. Uganda Wildlife Authority in 2013 established an intelligence unit, recruited and trained a specialized force of eight intelligence officers that have been deployed in strategic areas across the country to help prevent wildlife crime as opposed to firefighting. Following the arrest of Uganda Wildlife Authority officials, who were suspected to be involved in the illegal ivory trade, Uganda Wildlife Authority has actively stepped up this game in all international engagements and has used the opportunity on Uganda's position to fight the illegal trade. Committee chairpersons and members of the Budget Committee of Parliament say the Ministry of Finance should be restrained from the practice of demanding for endless supplementary budgets and loan approvals when the different sectors are grappling with law absorption capacities. This as the legislators were scrutinizing the supplementary budget proposals presented to the House by the new finance minister, Matia Kasaija. The habit of the Ministry of Finance always returning to requests for supplementary budgets appears to be irritating a section of MPs as they rally for a benchmark to be strictly followed in determining whether or not to approve supplementary requests. Then you find another one of 2013, which may be performing at almost the same level. We need to take time, it's time already spent after the approval of the loan into account before we, we impose that sanction. So we should not be battling with legal issues here in this committee. Therefore, I expect the, legal, the, the budget committee to guide us legally on what the government has paid above the three percent. So qualified and experienced are about 27 to begin misguiding the committee that this expenditure should not include certain expenditures and therefore it's only the 268 billion. What value addition is this? Cotton development organization. Who does not know that that is a dead organization promoting products? A, uh, uh, in a crop of slavery. The president has been that the government has most times brought supplementary requests and loan approval requests before the house, even when the already approved loans continue to lie redundant with a low absorption rate, even as the funds continue to attract huge interests. The MPs say supplementary requests must be approved only in emergency situations. Sabit Joseph, WC Television. This is WVS Prime News Live. Now a reminder of our top stories. Singer AK-47 found dead in a bathroom. Newly appointed cabinet minister ready for vetting on Wednesday. MPs pissed off with newly appointed finance minister Matia Kasaida over supplementary budget. Everything from the command central controller comes to life on a seven inch high res color screen. The stitching, the leather, 
The finish of this interior is hallmark Mercedes-Benz. This is for the magicians, the ones who make sure you and I are fresh and clean all day long. Amidst all challenges, they toil to make us shine. Every single day, they apply their magic to give us more than we've ever dreamt of. Magic that appeals to our senses. Magic so motherly that little angels can't resist. Only they can do this magic. Magic that makes a big job easy and fun. Buy White Star Magic Premium at any shop or supermarket near you and feel the magic of all day fresh clean. Welcome back to WBS Prime News Live. The National Security Information Systems Project confirms the exercise of the national ID issuance in Kampala is on progress despite a few hitches. President Yodi Museveni on the 3rd of December 2014 launched the issuance of the national identity cards to Ugandan citizens. However, a number of citizens have condemned the hiccups in the issuance exercise as Aaron's Tabaruka reports citizens in Kampala have had the chance to be issued their national IDs. Many citizens have either shunned approaching the issuance centers or were reluctant to visit the centers to check for their IDs. For the few who have turned up at the issuance centers, they have had the luck to find them while a number of them say they have waited in vain. At the beginning of this year, that's when I registered and uh, the, I came to pick in, they were like, I'll, ke I'll, I'll keep in it the next month. And I think the IDs haven't yet been issued to the upcountry dis districts. People uh, upcountry haven't received the IDs. Some Ugandans demand the IDs because they are very important for their day-to-day -day work. The identification, because there are so many foreigners who come, or people from Congo, refugees, what, and they tend to be Ugandan, so if you have it, these days, wherever you go, they ask for an ID. Paul Bukenya, the National Security Information Systems spokesperson, confirms the exercise is on progress after 400,000 of the 880,000 people in Kampala were issued with their IDs despite a few errors he attributes to both citizens and technical staff during the enrollment exercise. Today, we sent out uh, around 800,000 cards. In Kampala, and uh, issued to about 400,000 persons. Issuance is going to be over a period of time. We will not issue all cards in one day. Enrollment of Ugandan citizens at the parish level continue after starting on 14th of April 2014, and the closure of registration at the parish on 11th of August 2014. But mass continuous registration exercises currently on halt, only based at the sub-county level. According to the Internal Affairs Ministry, a total of 15,576,000 people representing 86.5% have been registered. There is hope that this data and national IDs will be used as national register according to the National Security Information Systems Project Roadmap. 880,000 Ugandans have already picked up their national IDs in Kampala. Alan Stabaruka, WBS Television. 
We now move to Masaka District, the RDC there, Lino Sungompek, and the residents of Namirembe landing site have been put to task and have taken to task the commandant of the reserve force in Masaka, Jafar Kairivu, to expose the owners of the impounded illegal fishing gears. This push follows reports that the fisheries enforcement team at times ends up selling the impounded illegal gears and immature fish for their personal gain. Kasibu and his team on Monday afternoon paraded illegal fishing nets worth 480 million shillings, which they collected from various landing sites, including Kiabisimbi in Brakai, Malembo, Dimo, Kalokoso, Kiase, and Lamu in Masaka district, and invited Ngombeke to witness as the nets were getting burnt at Namirembe landing site. <laughs> nga wa suspects te bali wo katwagala bafuno bakwato obutimba ne bananyi ne bavutimbo obo no lwecho twagala kati tusanko kuvunana bananyi ne bitimba bino mukoti mumpulira gombeki warned the fishermen against over drinking and going to the lake while drunk mwino ku okola munyanja nga here the fishermen also accused Kasirifu and his team of negotiating with some of the culprits who pay huge sums of money and get their illegal nets back, but Kasirifu outrightly denied this allegation. They accuse the team of hiding some of the impounded nets for their selfish interest and present only those which are old for destruction by burning them. The fishermen wondered why government did not fight the businessmen who purchased the nets and sold them to the fishing community rather than harassing them. <laughs> In spite of the blame game at play, Kasarebu was quick at observing the mistakes identified and thanked the people of Namirembe landing site for cooperating with his team to crack down the illegal fishing gears. <laughs> He said he had received a number of complaints from Kalanga district claiming that the people who leave Masaka due to tough operations against illegal fishing are now operating in Sese Islands. <laughs> Globally, illegal fishing activities cause financial losses of 10 to 23.5 billion dollars annually and Uganda as a country loses close to 3 billion shillings every year in illegal fishing activities on Lake Victoria despite the government's continued input in preventing the outstanding loss in a product that according to the Ministry of Finance statistics represents 60 percent of government revenue and provides up to 50 percent of animal protein for Ugandan households.
2016 is only months away and right now every political party is getting ready for the Democratic Party. They reveal plans to hold free and fair elections for elective positions starting from the grassroots structures of the party to the national level. The publicity secretary of the party, Paul Kenneth Kakande, confirmed at the press conference held at the party's headquarters in Kampala. And we now bring you the details. Last week, the Democratic Party convened in Massacre to iron out leadership issues that dog the party and also come up with a new strategic plan to help the party seize power from the ruling NRM in 2016 polls. However, speaking at a press conference, the publicity secretary of the party, Paul Kenneth Kakande, revealed the set dates for party members interested in elective leadership position from the grassroots positions to the national level leadership one can no longer have any excuse that I hate this one, I don't like this one, this is a bad person. The party has opened for all members of the party to contest for leadership positions in the Democratic Party. There is no excuse. Kakande notes that no position in the party will be pinned to a specific group of people. He stressed that should anyone come up after the party primaries to launch a complaint, they will not be listened to. Whoever does not turn up will have him or herself to blame and not blame the current leadership. In another development, the Democratic Party accused the Uganda police of not varying the taxpayers' money. A remark followed the just-concluded recruitment of over 140 cadets who were later dropped after spending too much money on the recruitment exercise. Public funds which were used on the people who do not qualify to be in our police force were wasted. Apparently, Uganda police is conducting a countrywide exercise of recruiting people to be conscripted into the force ahead of the 2016 presidential polls to strengthen security. We're so glad you're still watching WBS Prime News Live. Let's now have a reminder of our top stories. As the clock ticks to 2016, we ask if multi-party politics is taking center stage. Vetting of ministers getting closer and minister not scared. And Matia Kasaija condemned for the supplementary budget. Introducing Yuga Chick Super, chicken pieces that are individually quick frozen and easier to prepare. Yuga Chick Super has been packaged conveniently for your family. Buy Yuga Chick Super from a supermarket near you. My name is Musa, your travel agent. I'm taking you around Africa, our motherland, a land gifted with beauty that flows right from Uganda, the pearl of Africa. Our first destination will be Rwanda, a land of hills and beautiful ladies. Then Tanzania, the home to the great Kilimanjaro mountain. And Kenya, the Maasai Mara home. If I may ask, Anyone with more exciting sides? Movitable jelly and Movitable soap. Mm, that shows her love for quality African-made products. In fact, I move with Movitable jelly too. My friends and I at Compass all use Movitable products. As in, I even carried mine. To have a good service, I first bathe with Movitable you soap. see, I gave the right answer. Even at home, we use Movitable gel and Movitable soap. <laughs> Me too. Movit. All day confidence. Welcome back to Prime Business. The introduction of mobile banking in a few years has exhibited all of the potential of wiping out the traditional banking system, which has existed for more than 100 years, where customers held deposit accounts and received a range of services from the bank. 
It all started with MTN in 2009 and later rolled out to other telecom companies. And currently, 150,000 subscribers are estimated to be using mobile banking across all networks as opposed to the traditional commercial banking system. In this report, mobile banking is already peeling away some of the services from banks, notably payment services, and apparently out of the 6 million bankable class, only a quarter still cross to the traditional banking systems to carry out transactions, and in most cases, these are only the bulky ones. With the advent of mobile banking in 2009, Commercial banks have lost their dominance in the market for mobile money banking services. However, will traditional banking remain viable? But, of course, many will remain wondering how many more types of financial services will migrate from the traditional banks to mobile banking. The downward effect of mobile banking can now be felt by traditional banking institutions where now, few people flock banks to make transactions like paying for utility bills and bank statements. These services are now easily done on mobile banking. Having a mobile phone in every home and being able to access your accounts uh, from your mobile phone will, has, has created a lot of opportunities. Mobile money service really is, if, if you think about it, East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania combined, there are more mobile payments than any other part of the world. Customers nowadays are enjoying the extensive ability to carry out transactions, access their accounts, and even conduct a number of retail transactions on mobile phone, handsets, tablets, or laptops, in spite of the interruptions in the network. This comes at a time when most commercial banks in the country are striving to keep up with the new internet banking budget ushered by mobile telecommunication service providers. It gives you everything that you need to do in your bank when on, you, you are able to do it on your mobile phone. Uh, in a nutshell, our customers, we are giving our customers convenience, we are giving our customers um, comfort and satisfaction. You want to deposit money into the bank. DFC does not have a branch in Kamaz. And what you do is you simply go to the mobile money agent, deposit money onto your phone, and then, using mobile banking, move money from your phone into the bank. And in effect, you have made a deposit. In spite of the hurdles involved, financial illiteracy remains high in the country, and much is needed to address the problem. Take financial literacy to, to schools so that can be embedded into the financial curriculum, uh, all the way from, from kindergarten to, to A level and to higher institutions of learning. For us, mobile banking seems to have posed a major threat to the traditional banking systems. It still has a long way to go to in resolving more complex issues for customers. Users would be hard pressed to complete in depth financial tasks via a mobile phone, and many still prefer more traditional forms of bank account monitoring, where mobile money enables customers to carry out quick transactions, thus compelling many to avoid the traditional banking system. It is haunted by scandals of fraud and manipulations. Several former employees of MTN Uganda have testified before the anti-corruption court on how the telecom giant used its systems to create hot air money worth billions of shillings for mobile operators. That's the business to stay with us for the latest in sports. Older students teasing and hitting young students. I can see that they feel bad at school and then they leave school completely or stop learning. It is not right. Violence against children is not right, regardless of who commits it. I promise not to look away. I promise to speak up to make school better for everyone. What's your promise? Raising voices. Because a violence-free childhood is everyone's right.
Raising Voices. So now, not only do I have to deal with the ghost of Aurora... No! No, there's no solution for losing the love of my life! Well, your husband doesn't think so. Because instead of shooing me away, he took me into his bed, sweetie pie. I came to ask you to make love to me. If the press ever gets to know, I'll kill you. I've made up my mind about Blanca. I felt like I was being unfaithful to Aurora. Who will try to steal what little love and attention I get all for herself? You came to save me. My darling, I'm back. Welcome back to WBS Prime Sport. Federation of Motorsport Clubs of Uganda, FMU, together with World Motocross Body, FIM, have contracted German expert Jürgen Kippers to train the Ugandan team ahead of the East and Central African Motocross Championship set for May this year in Kampala. Having snatched the regional title from Kenya last year, Uganda will not take any chance as they defend their title starting with the May 1st round. FMU Vice President Motorcycling says they have three training programs for the team by another trainer from Germany in August ahead of the Continental Championship in September in Botswana. Just like Muangala, FMU Vice President Dusman Oki thanked Cooper for his love for Uganda and tasked a newly elected team, Maximi Van P, to look forward keeping the Ugandan flag high. The German who arrived in the country on Monday today will start training the national team at the newly redesigned Garuga race track. That's the sports. Stay with us for our news summary. chasing bonuses that don't last. Bonga Forever Ever from Uganda Telecom never expires and gives you up to 100% guaranteed bonus every time you load airtime. Simply dial star 100 hash, select Bonga Forever Ever and talk and text all networks with the bonus that lasts. Get Bonga Forever Ever from Uganda Telecom. Uganda Telecom, Uganda's most affordable telecom service. you buy everybody use more bits have a jelly more bits is amazing more bits is the best love it all the confidence in our news summary singer AK47 found dead in a bathroom Twenty ten bomb suspects deny being guilty. Airport police intercepts four drums of ivory being smuggled out of the country. Newly appointed cabinet minister ready for vetting on Wednesday. MP 
MPs pissed off by newly appointed Finance Minister Matia Kasaida over supplementary budget. And FMU contracts a German expert to train Ugandan team ahead of the Eastern Central Africa Motorsport Championship. News summary is brought to you by. Everybody is more Confidence. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have come to the end of WBS Prime News Live. I'm Anita Mwangzi. Up next is Issues at Hand. Keep watching and good night. Money.